Amen. Good afternoon, everyone. Jesus is alive. All right. Kayo mo ka tulog pa. All right. Sino sa inyo dito nagbakasyon? You went out on a vacation. All right. We have four people who went out on a vacation. Most of you stayed here in Manila. Wow. All right. We we went. Uh, my family and I went on a vacation, and I've been on the road for a total of eight hours. We I finished ten preachings while driving. Oh, say ko grave habang nagdrive ako gusto ko preach. Parang sarap lang if you're full of the word of God. And now uh, we want everyone here really to be in the spirit of of faith and expectancy of how God is going to move in our midst. But before I dive into the word, just two very important announcements. Number one, all right, ito bonus announcement to, no? okay. Harold Sela, best-selling author Harold Sela, will be here uh, April 13 to talk about healing. Okay, he's having a seminar on healing. He's uh, one of he's a pastor of pastors, one of the most respected uh authors and pastors in the world today, especially here in the Philippines. He'll be here. Uh, we have limited seats only because priority po nila yung mga medical uh, ano ba tawag dito? practitioners okay, who'll be here. So there's just an additional three to 400 seats left for Victory Green Hills dahil we're hosting them. So they're giving us uh, around 400 seats. So make sure to join us here. Be here earlier than then the time that's allotted there, 6 p.m., before 6 p.m., sana nandito na po kayo so that you'll be able to have a good seat for our Harold Sela. Second thing is what, what Josh announced this coming Wednesday, we've changed our Wednesday service to be really a day for us to do victory groups. So every Wednesday po dito sa, sa center po natin, in this na po worship service, we're going to have victory groups here. So for those people who are looking for victory groups, you want to be connected in church, you want to have a family, you want you know, to be discipled and mentored, Wednesday is the day for you, all right? So wala nang excuse na, nako, wala namang victory group dito, wala nang nakipag-usa sa akin, punta po kayo dito, all right? Kung gusto nyo talagang mag-grow kay Lord, hindi na dapat kayo bini-baby, all right? So come here on a Wednesday. Uh, for the next three Wednesday, we'll have a talk on success. And this Wednesday, it's Ardi Abelio who's... Uh, who's a well-known speaker in the Philippines, and he'll be here speaking about success. So please do join us. Hindi po ganito yung setting natin. Pabilog-bilog tayo, no? So it's only good for 400 people only. And every Wednesday, we already have 250 people coming here. So there's an additional 150 slots for those who want to join this one. And if you'll join this one, you'll be uh, plugged into one of our victory groups. Okay ba yan? Alright, so you don't need to sign already kung gusto nyo ng victory groups. Every Wednesday, may victory group din po tayo dito. Alright, so uh, that's our two announcements. Now let's go to our word for today. Just to give you a review of uh, what was preached last week, Pastor Tito preached about the exchange that happened on the cross, right? Na sa cross, from our sin, it was Christ's righteousness was given to us. Alright, so imbis na ngayon, puno ako ng kasalanan, ngayon puno na ako ng righteousness ni Lord. Second thing was uh, his uh, wound, his blood for our healing. I'll expound on that more today. And thirdly, our curse was exchanged for the blessing that can only be found in Christ. In short, I don't need to live a life that's cursed. I now live a life of blessing because of what Christ has done for me. All right? And the reason Easter Sunday is so important is because ito yung pinaka... Uh, could I say, the highlight of our faith and where our faith really rests is on the resurrection of Christ, right? Because if the resurrection did not happen, everything we do here is useless, right? That's why this is so important today. And at the end of the day, people who have experienced Christ and His grace lives in victory. Kaya nga gustong gusto yung mag-church, di ba? Sa victory, Green Hills. Ayaw niyong mag-church sa defeated Green Hills, all right? Because everybody wants to live a victorious life. Am I right? Nobody here wants to li live uh, defeated lives. Gusto niyo nananalo kayo sa buhay. Gusto niyo na kay Lord kayo. Gusto niyo yung lakas ni Lord na sa inyo. And that's why you want to have victory. And this is what we want really to look at today and expound today on why the resurrection is important and why Jesus is alive and the implications na ngayon Jesus is alive, how does it now translate to how I live my faith here on earth? In 1 Corinthians 15, let me read this verse before we pray. It says, but if it is preached, 
that Christ has been raised from the dead, how can some of you say there is no resurrection of the dead? Paul was saying, please, let's not get into a debate and let's not go into archaeological evidences that Christ is resurrected. He has resurrected. Let's not even talk about that, right? He's, he was coming on a premise that, hey, look at the grave. Jesus is not there anymore. He has risen, and there are witnesses that saw that Jesus was alive, right? And if there's no resurrection of the dead, verse 14, then not even Christ has been raised. And if Christ has not been raised, our preaching is useless, and so is your faith. Let's pray. Father, we ask today, that your Holy Spirit would come and break whatever it is in our minds. Lord, that we, we, we try to misconstrue about the resurrection. And Lord, right now we pray that we would understand your word and apply the principles that we've learned through the preaching of your word today. And we pray that the resurrection would really come alive in our lives. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. You see, yung cross kasi you must view the cross in light of the resurrection. Pag nakikita natin yung cross ni Christ, it should be in the standpoint of the resurrection. Because it is the resurrection that enables us to really understand the cross. Okay? Kasi pag walang resurrection, yung cross na nakikita natin, it would be the object of failure, of the biggest failure in history. That's why pag makita mo yung mga churches natin, lalo na makita nyo sa mga uh, Protestant churches, yung cross, walang nakapakong tao doon. Why? Because the God that we worship and the Jesus that we worship is a Jesus who's alive and not a Jesus who's still nailed on the cross. Hindi na nakapako si Lord. Okay? Lumipad na siya papuntang langit. Alright? In short, the Jesus that we worship is alive. He's well and He's living and He's moving and He's transforming people. He's no longer a Jesus that's nailed on the cross, but our Jesus is one that we worship who's alive, right? And, but because of the resurrection, the cross now becomes the greatest victory in history. That's why when I see the cross, it still amazes me that the God that I worship is a God that's, who's alive. One time, si Michael Angelo, no? yung painter at saka yung uncle ko, no? turned to his fellow artist and, and asked them, why do you keep filling gallery after gallery with endless pictures on the one theme of Christ in weakness? Christ on the cross. And most of all, Christ hanging dead. Why concentrate on the passing episode as if it were the last work, as if the curtain dropped down there on disaster and defeat? That dreadful scene lasted only a few hours. But to an ending eternity, Christ is alive. Christ rules and reigns and triumphs. Sabi ni Michelangelo, alam niyo ang problema kasi natin, we've been stuck in seeing and worshiping a dead Savior. Move on. Christ is risen. Don't worship Jesus as if Jesus is still dead. Marami sa atin, ganun pa rin ang buhay natin. Eh. Ang buhay natin, parang patay si Jesus. Parang walang Jesus. Alam mo yung pupunta tayo ng church, bakit? Uh, pang ano yan, pang pogi points kay Lord. Nagawa ko na yung tradition ko every Sunday. Nagsisimba na ako. Naupo lang tayo dito. And we really do nothing because we don't have the proper understanding of the resurrection of Christ. Therefore, we live our faith as nominal Christians. As Christians who don't really understand the resurrection and the power that goes behind the doctrine of the resurrection. Kasi pag di mo naintindihan itong resurrection na to, sayang lang talaga kung bakit tayo nandito every week. Kung bakit tayo nag-worship, ba't tayo nagsasacrifice ng oras natin, ba't tayo nag-minister, ba't tayo nag-discipleship. Kung patay pala si Lord. Don't get stuck with a dead Savior. He is alive. In short, every facet of our life must exude the resurrection power of Christ. Kaya nga dapat yung Christians, they need to be the most alive people in the world. Nagets nyo? Ang Christians, pag na-meet nyo, dapat, ang saya-saya nila. Anong meron sa kanila? You need to be the most alive people in the world. Alright? You need to be the most alive people in the world para kayong antok ngayon. 
All right? In short, this is real. Eh, minsan kasi problema sa atin, parang pag nakamit ka ng Christian, parang na, mas natatakot. Naku, Christian. Ayan na yung Christian. Di ba? Ayan na yung mangungutang ulit sa akin. Di ba? Yan yung sa office, yan yung ano, walang kaibigan. Yan yung lagi na AHR. Kasi work time, nagpe-prayer. Di ba? O yan yung Christian na hindi nga nagdanakaw, nagbabayad ng taxes, pero nag-uwi ng paperclip. Di ba? Sometimes, we're, we live out our faith as if we are worshiping a dead Savior. We worship a God who is alive. And therefore, we must exude that life that is found in Christ. John 11, verse 25 and 26, it says, You don't have to wait for the end. I am right now. This is Jesus speaking. Resurrection and life. The one who believes in me, even though he or she dies, will live. And everyone who lives believing in me does not ultimately die at all. Do you believe this? Jesus is saying, mga kapatid, don't wait for the end. Don't wait in your last days on a dead bed and said, Nako, kailangan ko na talaga si Lord. Mamamatay na ako. Huwag mo nang antayin doon. Huwag mo nang antayin na mamamatay ka na bago mo kukunin si Lord. Una-una kasi hindi mo alam kailan ka mamamatay. Mamaya paglabas mo dito, may saging na nadulas ka, patay ka. Hindi mo alam. Alright? Yung iba, uy, pero usog ha. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You'll never know when Christ will get you. Right? And so Jesus was saying, that's why Christians are to be the most alive because Jesus was saying, you don't have to wait for the end. Now, right now, I am the resurrection and I am the life. It means the life that you need is found in me. Don't wait for it, right? It can be found now. Minsan kasi in theology natin is based on a theology that when Satan comes, nakakatakot si Satan, sobrang laki niyan. Naku, pag may weapon yan, patay tayong lahat. Medyo ganun yung theology natin, eh. lalo na dito sa Pilipinas. Kitang-kita mo. Holy Week, kitang-kita mo. Yeah. Nandun kami, kumakain kami, nag-order ako Friday. Wala akong alam sa mga batas ng Holy Week. So, umorder ako ng kare-kare. Eh, may kasama ako, sabi niya, uy, masarap tong kare-kare nila. Ay, hindi mo na kami mag-order niyan. Sir, kung bakit? Friday ngayon eh. Sa Saturday na kami. Okay. Why? Because in their minds, they can't eat it or else bad, bad luck would come or spirits would do something in them, alright, that baka masira yung buhay nila. Right? Because we, they are, though they're professing Christians, they still worship a dead Savior. And they don't understand the resurrection and now they're bound by superstitions because they're afraid of, of luck and of spirits to come. Right? Kaya nga, di ba, pag nagdadrive tayo, lalo ng mga long trip, di ba, tas pag medyo na si CR ka na, walang CR, tas mag CR ka, i, mag ano ka na, you know, mag PP, alright? Di ba, pag nasa puno, anong gagawin mo muna? Ha? Huh? Papaalam ka muna, di ba? Ba't ka nagpapaalam? Kasi baka may... Duwende doon, di ba? Sabi ng duwende, panghi, ang panghi. Di ba? Gumaga. Kaya dapat nagpapaalam ka muna, di ba? Why are we doing that? It's because of wrong theology. Because we don't understand the resurrection. And therefore, we're trying to appease the spirit world because we're afraid of what the spirit world would do to us. Kaya nga, takot na takot tayo. Di ba? Kaya imbis i-declare natin yung word ni God, madami tayong pamahiin because we have not understood the implications of the resurrection. Di ba? Yan yung mga, pati sa, di ba, kung may sakit, imbis na pupunta kay Jesus, pupunta muna kay Manong Albulario. This, after kay Albulario, mamayang gabi, mag-pray, dinidikit. Sa negosyo, ganun din. Professing Christians, love kami ni Lord, nagtatithe kami, punta ka sa tindahan nila, may palaka. <laughs> Biglang sa table, may, may pusang nag hip hop <laughs> Sa likod, may Santo Nino. Di ba? Sa entrance, may Buddha. Di ba? Lahat, pwede. Tapos may victory sticker. <laughs> Tinde, ha? 
ginawa pang octagon yung victory sticker, di ba? Why? It's because we don't understand the resurrection. Alright? Hindi ko pa to preaching, ha? introduction lang to. Alright? But you know what? If you understand the res- resurrection, maybe what God intends for you is really to be someone He'll use in the kingdom of God. Maybe God's intention for you is to, is to reveal His, His, His uh, workings and His outworkings through your ministry. Maybe God intends for you to even be the next president of the Philippines. You never know. Right? Pero dahil you worship a dead Savior, you're not even expectant of what God can do for you. And so you settle. And because you don't understand the implications of the resurrection, you live your faith as if you're praying to a God who's deaf and a God who cannot hear you. Today, all around the world, the message is being preached, Jesus is alive. Who among you here believe that Jesus is alive? All right. Come on, give me a shout if you believe Jesus is alive. All right. All right. Now you're alive. Okay. That's why... The devil works hard to try to keep you focusing on the problems of life. That's why he tries to keep your attention turn away from the living Word of God. He doesn't want you to know the Word of God. He doesn't want you to know your full life, resurrection life that is found in Christ. In fact, the prospect of you just knowing how the resurrection could affect your life makes him tremble. What Satan wants is for you to just go to church. What Satan wants is for you to do your nightly prayers before going to sleep and prayer before meals. What Satan wants is for you to read your Bible and study it scholarly and not even apply anything you've ever read. That's what Satan wants. Satan wants you to be an active member of the church without understanding the cross and the resurrection of Christ. Sa ang plano lang nila, ganito lang. Alam mo si Satan, master strategy siya. Eh. Sabi niya, dapat ang mga tao pumunta ng simbahan. At pagpunta nila ng simbahan, matuwa na sila na nagsisimba sila. At paglabas nila ng simbahan, okay na yon. That's what Satan wants. Satan just wants you to be nominal in your faith. Satan doesn't want you to advance the kingdom of God. Satan doesn't want you to understand the resurrection. The devil tries to blind our eyes from what is the truth. That's why people who understand the resurrection, they're never the same again. People who understand the gospel, they're forever changed. Hindi mo mapipigilan ng isang taong naiintindihan yung resurrection. Pero ang taong hindi naiintindihan ng resurrection, isang ano lang, pimple, wala na yan. Ayaw niya na kay Lord. Isang problema lang, wala na. Bakit? Hindi niya naiintindihan eh. Yun yung gusto natin gawin ngayon. In the next 30 minutes, for you to really understand the resurrection. Why? Because once you truly understand that you have the life of God inside of you, you'll begin to act just like Jesus did. You lay hands on the sick and they'll recover. You'll cast out demons. You'll proclaim the gospel and preach the gospel to every creature. You become, you become a very, very dangerous man and woman. Pag naintindihan mo yung resurrection, para ka ng lito lapid. Isa na lang yung bala mo, kaya mong patayin ang buong demonyo. Okay? Kahit anong baril sa'yo, parang wala kang takot. Bish, 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 bish. Hindi ka tinatamaan. Bakit? You're already dead. And you know, when I die, I'll be resurrected. I understand now what the resurrection power of Christ can do in me. And nothing is going to stop you except Christ when He wants to get you ready because you're so good. You understand? Right? And that's our prayer for today, for you to understand the victory that you have in Christ. In short, you'll be just what God intended you to be. You'll be the body of Christ here on earth. Jesus is not dead. Jesus is alive. Jesus is not defeated. Jesus is our victory. In fact, Christ is our victor. Or yung tinatawag natin, Christus Victor. This is what we're declaring today, that Christ, the victor. That the Christ that I worship is Christ, the victor. Say, Christ, the victor. So what, I have two things that I believe the Holy Spirit just wants me to share. 
on the victory that we have because of the resurrection. Now, there are thousands, I'm telling you, thousands of victory that we have over because of the resurrection. But let me just focus on two because I believe this is where the Spirit of God wants to lead our church this week as we celebrate Easter on two victories that we have because of the resurrection. Number one is victory over sin. Okay? Because of the resurrection, we have victory over sin. In 1 Corinthians 15, verse 55 to 56, it says, O death, where is your victory? O death, where is your sting? The sting of death is sin, and the power of sin is the law. But thanks be to God who gives us victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. Okay? Sabi dito ni Paul, death, where is your sting? Death, where is your victory? The word death that was used here was from a Greek word called kentron, which means yung scorpion, pag nasting ka ng scorpion, yung poison ng scorpion, yun yung ginamit na word. Sino dito na sting na ng scorpion? Right. Wala pa? Meron akong kaibigan na sting siya ng scorpion. Alam nyo nangyari? Naging scorpion king siya. Okay. <laughs> Tapos gumawa siya ng movie, no? Alright. Hindi, nasa na ba ako? Alright. Ano ba yung mga pumapasok sa utak ko? Alright. Back in the spirit. Okay. So what does he mean when he say that the power or the poison is what? The sin of the law. Sin is the law. Okay. Sabi doon, when he says that the poison is the sin in the law, he means that for all of us, natatakot tayong mamatay. Ba't tayo natatakot mamatay? Dahil alam natin, pag namatay tayo, we will face God one day in judgment. You ask people, what's your fear? Aside from speaking publicly, okay, they would say, natatakot akong mamatay. Ako, I'll be honest, natatakot din ako mamatay. Na yung mukha ko nakaganon. Okay? Pero, pero mamatay, okay lang. Okay? Pero wag yung mga naka, may truck, may train, okay, wag, wag ganon. Right? <laughs> Saan na ba ako? Alright. People are afraid to die because they know of the impending judgment that we'll have when we face God. We're afraid. And it's our human nature Di ba pag may na-offendan tayong tao, pag na-offend ko si Joash, ano sasabihin ko kay Joash? Joash, how can I make it up to you? What can I do to make it up to you? Right? It is our human nature to make it up. But here's the problem. That's why we fear death. It's because we know that there is nothing we can do to repay the debt we have kay Christ. The sin that we have, we cannot pay. Baun tayo sa utang kay Lord. And we are fear of the judgment that is ahead. That's why people, they don't want you to ask, di ba? If you die, where are you going? Yeah. Yung iba, style natin, ganun tayo mag-share ng gospel, di ba? Kung namatay ka ngayon, saan ka pupunta? Kapak! Anong mamamatay ako ngayon, di ba? Ano ba yung tanong mo? Yeah. Ayaw nga kita kausapin. Bakit? They're afraid of death. Right? Why? Because they know that they have to face God. And no other people of faith would even dare say that they're going to heaven except Christians. Napansin niyo ba yun? Walang iba ang kaya magsabi na pag namatay ako, punta akong langit. Kaya nga feeling nila mga born again, mayabang eh. Yabang mo naman, punta kang langit. Kala mo sino ka mabayat. Actually, pag sinabi nila sa akin yun, sabi ko, hindi, hindi naman ako mayabang. Actually, ikaw mayabang eh. Kasi ako naniwala ako sa sinayin Lord. Ikaw, hindi ka naniwala. Yabang mo naman. Mas magaling ka pa kay Lord. Yeah. Hindi ko sinasabi ito dahil mabait ako. Ah. Sinasabi ko ito dahil mabait si Lord. At naniniwala ako kay Lord. Pero ikaw, ewan ko. You understand? Yeah. Tayo may assurance eh. Kaya nga sinabi ko, ang Christians, they need to be the most alive people in the world. Dahil alam mo, kahit namatay ka, mabubuhay ka ulit. Yeah. Hindi yung pag nabuhay ka ulit, ipis ka na, or buti ka. Hindi. Okay. Pag nabuhay ka, nasa langit ka, buhay ka. All right? And so, nasaan na ba ako sa message ko, no? Okay, parang nag enjoy na ako magkwento, no? Here's what Hebrews 10 said. Hebrews 10, verse 1 to 3. He says, the law, sabi niya, diba, oh, death, where is your sting? Where is your victory? Kasi yung law, those people under the law, here's how they do things. The law is only a shadow of the good things that are coming. 
not the realities themselves. For this reason, it can never be the same. Sacrifices repeated endlessly year after year make perfect those who draw near to worship. Okay, verse 3. Okay, next slide. Otherwise, they would not have stopped being offered for the worshipers would have been cleansed once for all and would no longer have felt guilty for their sins. But those sacrifices are an annual reminder of sins. What was the writer of Hebrews saying? Sabi niya, people who are under the law, which is the death, okay, because we live under the law, Every time in the Old Testament, they would go to church and they would offer sacrifices. And they would repeat it endlessly, the Bible says. Year after year, they have to go and offer and offer. And they said it won't even cleanse the guilt of their sin. That's why they have to do it repeatedly. In short, if you do something repeatedly, it means it's not working. If you do something repeatedly, it means it's not working. If you do something repeatedly, it means it's not working. You get it? Or do I have to repeat it because it's not working? Okay? Naintindihan nyo? Kailangan paulit-ulit. Sino sa inyo dito, ganun kayo kay Lord? Paulit-ulit na lang. Offer, offer, appeasing God. And you know it's not working. Why? Because you live under the law. So now, when the resurrection happened, Jesus was saying, once and for all, no longer do you have to do things repeatedly, endlessly, year after year. Why? I have transformed you. I have saved you. I have loved you fully. It means Jesus is the one and ultimate sacrifice. And so when Jesus died, you no longer have to repeat. It is fully paid. That's why Christ declared at the cross, it is finished. In short, it's done. I've done it for you. So the sting of the law is the deep knowledge that our sin must be paid for and that we do not have enough to pay the bill. But in Christ, there's no sting in death because He took our condemnation. He took the judgment for us. And the resurrection is the receipt that our debt was paid in full. In short, when Christ resurrected, parang resibo man na yun, bayad na. Kasi nabuhay ulit si Lord. Right? Last week, pumunta ako dito sa Quickly. Bumili ako ng coffee jelly. Bumili pa ako dalawa. Tapos pagbigay sa akin, ano, sabi ko, Miss, nakalimutan mo Sukli ko po. Tingin siya sa akin. Yung sukli. Sukli nito. Uh, sir, hindi pa ako kayo nagbabayad. <laughs> Sayang, ang kapal naman ng mukha ko. Yeah. In short, kailangan ko na resibo to prove that I really paid for the quickly. Alright? And that was my only proof na hindi niya ako susuklian dahil hindi pa ako nagbabayad. Dahil wala nga resibo. Alright? The receipt, the resurrection is like a receipt. Alright? I, I have a receipt here. Okay? And this is a proof that when I, I went to the grocery, and this is my receipt, right? It means when the guard stops me and tells me, Sir, hindi pa ako kayo nagbabayad. Sabihin ko, ang kapal na mukha mo. May resibo ako. Huh? This is my proof that I have paid for everything and I'm not a thief. All right? This is the proof. The resurrection is the proof that Christ paid my sin and Christ paid it fully. That's why when Satan comes to you and, and the spirits would come to you and put depression in your mind and rejection and all this unforgiveness, what do you do? Do you cry with the demons and say, Tama ka nga, tama ka. Or do you take out your receipt and say, No, Jesus is alive. Jesus did it for me. It's paid in full. I don't need to live this way anymore. Marami sa atin, stuck na tayo sa pahas. Stuck na tayo doon sa Jesus na napako sa cross. Kaya wala tayong ginawa kundi umiyak sa buhay. And never move on in life. Why? Because we never fully understood. The resurrection is the receipt saying, paid in full. It means Jesus did it all 
for me. When the devil accuses us and condemns us, we simply produce the receipt. Christ, and what's written in the receipt? Christ rose from the dead. My sins are paid in full. Sabi nga nila, no, if the devil reminds you of your past, remind him of his future. All right? And may dinagdagan pa ako, no? And give him a Bible study of your future in Christ. This is who I am in Christ. And I'm going to heaven and you're going to hell. To hell with you. Okay? Here's what Dr. Harry Huth said. This is such a powerful quotation. He says, when I appear before the judgment throne of Christ, I'll be wearing his perfect robe of righteousness. Okay? So if Jesus says to me, that's not good enough, you will have to go to hell, I will respond. Then you will have to come with me, Jesus. Because if your perfect record of righteousness is not enough to keep me out of hell, it is not enough to keep you. But thanks be to God, Jesus rose from the dead. Death could not hold him and it could not hold me. Martin Luther said, Lord Jesus, you are my righteousness. I am your sin. You have taken upon yourself what is mine and I have given me what is yours. You have become what you were not so that I might become what I was not. There has been an exchange, a great wonderful exchange whereby the Son of God has taken all our guilt in order to set us all His righteousness. Isaiah 54, 17 says, No weapon formed against you shall prosper. And every tongue which rises against you in judgment, you shall condemn. This is the heritage of the servants of the Lord and their righteousness is from me, says who? Pagdating nyo sa judgment. If you have Christ in you, the robe of His righteousness is in you. The Bible says, no weapon formed against you shall prosper. Darating si Satan o yung guardian demon mo. Sabi niya, ito yung mga ginawa niyan. Mm. Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. But because of the robe of righteousness, the Bible says, no weapon formed against you shall prosper. And every tongue that rises against you in judgment, you shall condemn. Okay? Why? May mana tayo kay Lord. Ano yung mana natin? The righteousness that comes from God. You know what righteousness means? Righteousness means without sin. Not because I haven't sinned here on earth, but because His death produced in me that righteousness. That's why we have victory over sin. That's why sin has no longer any hold on me because of the resurrection of Christ. It's like my receipt. Second thing. First is victory over sin. Second is victory over death. Right. What do we mean by victory over death? Your resurrection in Christ ensures our victory over the final enemy which all of us will face, which is death. Christ's resurrection was not simply a coming back from the dead. When He rose from the dead, Jesus was the first fruits of a new hu kind of human life, a life in which His body was made perfect, no longer subject to any weakness, aging, or death, but able to live eternally. And when He returns, this mortal will put on immortality. Sa sabi sa Romans 8, verse 10 to 11. Here's what the Bible says. And although our current body is subject to death and decay, our current, look at your body now, that's your current body. All right? Even with all the uh, lipocavitation na nakuha nyo sa insogo, this is your current body. Okay? We will, at the final resurrection, receive a glorified body that will never know sin, sickness, disease, or death. And while we wait for that final event, we can experience what? Some of the benefits in this life right now. Next verse, right? As Paul said, if Christ is in you, though the body is dead because of sin, yet the spirit is alive because of 
righteousness. But if the spirit of him who raised Jesus from the dead dwells in you, he who has raised Christ Jesus from the dead will also give life to your what? Mortal bodies through his spirit who dwells in you. What does that mean? Okay. Let me illustrate to you. Okay. Let me call on uh, Victor. Ikaw na lang. Ayan. Okay. This is Victor. Okay. Let me illustrate to you Romans 8. Balik natin sa Romans 8 verse 10. Okay. Ikaw yung current body. Okay. May Okay. Ilan taon ka na? 38. Okay. He's 38. I'm 26. Alright? Sabi, verse 10, our current body is subject to death and decay. Right? Si Victor, kahit anong exercise, anong supplements, liver aid, ano ba bang mga kinakain mo ngayon? Na, uh, Enervon. Okay. At saka Maki House. Okay. Kahit anong healthy food na kakainin niya, tatanda to. May mga lalaw-law dyan. Okay. It's decaying. Alright? But we will, they say, at the final resurrection, receive a glorified body. Okay. <laughs> Para ma ma makita nyo lang, ma-picture nyo lang. Okay. Okay, decay, glorified. Okay? <laughs> nee, nee, dito ka lang. Okay. That will never... <laughs> Minsan lang ako makaganti. Okay. That will never know sin, sickness, disease, or death. Grabe nun. Promise sa Bible, pagpunta raw natin ng langit, may glorified bodies tayo. Yun yung resurrection body. Okay, yan yung glorification na tinatawag. In short, pag mataba ka ngayon, pagdating mo ng langit, Okay. All right. And while we wait for that final event that Jesus comes again, we can experience what? Some of the benefits in this life right now. Okay. Victor, may, do you have any ano, pain, sickness in your body now? Wala. Wala kang sakit? Wala. Okay. Wala talaga. Okay. <laughs> okay. Sige nga, subukan mo nga ito. Okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right. But there would be times that Victor will not feel well, right? There are times Victor will need healing. Karga siya biglang na ano or something, or nagbabasketball biglang na ano. The Bible says, as a child of God and as a child of righteousness, Victor can receive some of the benefits right now. As the church of Christ here on earth, and I have the resurrection power of Christ in me, I therefore be becomes an agent of healing and of some of the benefits can be experienced right now. The reason the church goes out and prays for sick people, casts out demons, make disciples, is because we are experiencing and living the resurrection life. The reason I can declare healing over someone who has cancer is because, not because I'm Christ and I'm the healer, but because of the resurrection power of Christ. That's why I could declare. Now, it's no longer my business if that person would get well or not. It's not my business. It is the business of Christ to heal. But as an agent of Christ, I go and enforce the promises and the covenant of God. You understand? Right? Here's the problem. Why do many people don't receive healing? Right? I'm not saying this is dogmatic na dahil lang ito yung rason. But a reason that I've seen as I go around is because people don't have the spirit of faith to expect God to move. The reason there's so few healings happening in Metro Manila is because we kind of box God and it's as if we're worshiping a God who cannot heal any sickness or disease. But if we now move in the spirit of faith and we are now more expectant, we can now become agents of healing to people. Right? Uh, dito ka lang. Okay lang. It's lonely at the top. Okay? So, what I'm saying is now, Victor, though his body is decaying, he can declare healing to happen. 
he can now go to his relatives and lay hands on them and believe God for healing to happen. Nagagets niya ba? Alright? Who among you here believes that God can still heal? Alright. Right. Who among you here, you're sick? Okay. Right. Who among you here believe, yung mga may sakit, that God can heal you? Alright? Even with this mortal body, the Bible says life can be given to you. Thank you, Victor. All right? Jesus will give life to our mortal bodies. The promise of healing is ours. When Jesus resurrected from the dead, He overcame the power of death, and now we have same access to that power that rose Jesus from the grave. Yung power na nakapag uh, raise someone from the dead is the same power that we use when we pray for people. That's why we can boldly pray for people. If we want God to move in signs and wonders, in supernatural things, even as we go and make disciples, even as we teach people in every area of our life, you know how we're going to do it? We have to really expect God to move in our midst. Have that spirit of faith and expectancy that God is going to move once I do this, once I step out and move in faith because I worship a miracle working God. The greatest miracle has always been before our eyes. Jesus rose from the dead. And it's the Jesus that I worship every week. Let me end with this verse, Isaiah 53, verse 5. He said, but he was pierced for a rebellion. He was crushed for our sins. That's victory over sin. He was beaten so we could be whole. He was whipped so we could be healed. That's victory over death and sickness.